Don't look behind or I will shoot you. I tried to move forward despite the tiredness, dizziness and fear. I had been sold to some people and a new life awaited me on the other end. I am a leaser and this is my story. The worst mistake I made in life was to always trust others. I never thought ill of anyone, which explains why I opened up to people so easily. My motto was shared love and I wanted to give as much as I could to my relatives and sometimes even to strangers. Honey, you can't always give everything to others. You need to know how to balance things out. It's okay to be kind, but it should be limited if you know what I mean. Grandma said to me, one day when she was leaving the hospital and I went to pick her up after her appointment with the doctor, I had arrived a bit early and while waiting for her at the reception, I saw a little boy with a bandaged foot. Probably it was a fracture, accompanied by a young lady on the phone. Hello, she said. Please, Carl, can you come pick us up at the hospital? Lucien had an accident and I haven't even paid for the hospital bills yet and I can't leave without doing so. Or what? Wait. It seemed that the other person on the other end of the phone had hung up on her. I walked over to her to see what was going on. She looked so depressed and so was the little boy too. Hello, madam. Excuse me for asking, but are you all right? I said as I got close to her. She looked at me and suddenly her eyes were filled with tears. I was so embarrassed and handed her a handkerchief. After pulling herself together, she took a deep breath and said to me in a weak voice, I don't know what to do. Lucien, my son, broke his leg in school, as you can see, but I am unable to pay for the medical treatment. I have called for help, but apparently no one is willing to help me. But I have a job, you know. It's just that I haven't received my monthly pay yet, and given the magnitude of my loads, it's not easy. I can't even take care of my own son. In a few minutes, she told me something of her life, and it was so far from being beautiful. I felt so sorry and decided to help her. I was able to pay her bill and even the taxi fare. You might be wondering what do I do for a living? Well, nothing. Not that I don't want to, but I'm not just ready yet. My long dead parents had taken care of sending me to the most prestigious business school in town. I had graduated a few years ago, but I had not been able to forget about the sad moments in my life. Losing both parents at once, believe me, does change a lot in one's life. So I lived with grandma to heal my wounds and I took care of her. I didn't want anything to happen to her because she is the only person on this earth that I have left. I inherited my parents' wealth and I ran all the businesses indirectly with the help of my grandmother. I had a taste of sadness and it was so horrible that I made sure that the people around me were happy. The Bible tells us to do unto others what we would have them do to us, right? But who was I talking about? Oh yes, I was talking about my new acquaintance. Her name was Lula. And it was after she had left that I set off with my grandmother, who was of course proud of the gesture, but also careful. According to her, I should think before helping others. Don't worry, Grandma. Doing good has never hurt anyone. And besides... I know that God himself watches and sees everything. He will always do justice. I often said after she makes such a remark. Time went by and one morning during my jogging period, I ran into Miss Lola again by chance as she had made it clear to me that she was not married. Lola, what a surprise. How are you? I said happily. I'm fine, Miss Alisa. I hope you are too. No, please consider me as a friend. We all are of the same age, right? Okay, I understand, she replied. I invited her to sit with me and we had time to get to know each other. It's crazy, but the conversation we had was so clear as if we had known each other for a long time. She likes the same things as me and I found her so strong. She was an independent mother who fought day and night for her son. When I was by her, my life seemed so peaceful. And it's strange that I think about it now because I told her everything about myself since the day I was born. 
but at the end of our conversation, I didn't know much about her apart from her son's name and hers. I didn't even know what job she actually did, but I told myself it wasn't worth knowing. We became friends very quickly and I invited her to my house. She joined me there with her son to meet grandma. Everything went on well, but after she left, my grandmother told me that she had a bad feeling about my new friend. And of course, I didn't really pay attention to her because I thought she was just too suspicious. One Thursday evening, Lola called me and invited me to a party she was organizing at her place to celebrate the promotion she had received at work. I was so happy for her, I jumped for joy. I had prayed so much to God for her open doors. I tried to get her to work for us, but grandma had strongly been kicking against it. So I went as planned to Lola's house the following weekend with a gift for Lucien and for herself. You are so kind, madam, said Lucien. But why did you come? You should have stayed at home. I tried to reach out to you with no response. He whispered in my ear. I didn't understand anything. And Lola entered the room and asked me to follow her to the backyard because the guest had to sit on that side due to the lack of space inside. According to Lola, Lucien had to stay there. When we got there, I also saw two men standing. But who are these people? I asked. They are just my bosses. Oh, I see. They are here for the party, are they? She replied mockingly and went on to say, It was so easy, you know. You would trust even the devil himself. Let me explain something to you. I did get the promotion. And guess who made it happen? You. Because I'm going to make a lot of money with you. Those gentlemen you're seeing there are going to take you with them. And there's no need to shout. It's an almost deserted area. And nobody will hear you from here. You will have a taste of what it feels like to suffer. And to be in the shoes of people like me without a family and left alone to fend for yourself. After hearing that, my body froze. It sounded like a nightmare or a horror movie. Before I came back to my senses, I was knocked out on my head and got up in the back of a car. These strangers made me join some other girls who had been held captive. It was certainly human trafficking. The Lord is my shepherd, my help in time of need, I said instantly. I was certainly afraid, but at some point I felt that assurance that it was going to be okay. I didn't know where we were going. They made us walk in single line like slaves. Father, is it wrong to do good? Why do you let your children act like this? Teach them now how to love, I beg you. I believe in you that you would hold my hand, that you would hold my future. So come and act. I declare my deliverance in the name of Jesus. We had just arrived at the airport, about to be boarded, when suddenly police car sirens surrounded the whole place, and it was total panic. A gunfire broke out, and I lay down behind the car. The police were able to grab them, and we were released. When I asked how they got there, my grandmother told me that Lucien had revealed everything to them. His mother was arrested. And as for him, I couldn't abandon him, so I took him in with me. He is now in a boarding school. And as for my grandmother, don't worry about her. She has accepted that doing good is my nature. So I just pray that the Father will give me more strength and especially the spirit of discernment. Beloved, in all things pray to God first and act according to his will. I have learned this the hard way because I do not wish that any of you experience the same thing.